Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for stopping by the shop this morning. Busy time in the shop right now. Um, well, to start with, it's uh, the time off between Christmas and New Year's. This is the time last year when I finished the uh, CNC spindle machine. I had plans to start working heavily on another one, a CNC plasma table. I was going to use the same control tower, all that. Um, but uh, the events of a few weeks back uh, pushed that off a little bit. Uh, when I bought the machine shop contents, um, that has given me the opportunity to reorganize this mess. And it's a mess. I've never had a shop that I felt this disorganized about. Granted, there's a lot of projects going on in here. There's two of us now that work in here, which is great. My wife actually does more woodworking now than I do. Um, I've come across some things that I've wanted to do something with, like this old drill press I want to hang on the wall. I've got a couple other things around. Uh, my new drone arrived while I was hunting in Montana. Um, I want to play with that some more. Um, don't quite know how to do aerial shots in the shop or why I would do that, but never can tell. But the uh, focus for this video isn't going to be a real long one. I uh, had a comment on my CNC overview video uh, asking, in general, uh, why I chose the, the uh, water-cooled spindle that I did and why not a router. And this here is a, oh, it's about a one and a half horse porter cable. This would have been what I would have used. Um, well, that's really annoying. <laughs> oh, they didn't lie about horsepower. They didn't even put it on there. Anyways, um, this is the same motor that's on plunge bases. This happens to be a D-handle base. This would have been the router motor I would have used on the CNC if I'd have done it that way. Um, but I chose to go with a spindle, and so let's go over there, and I'm going to show you and demonstrate for you why I chose a spindle over a router. So let's go check it out. Okay, we're over here at the CNC machine. Someone asked me uh, in comments why it was I chose uh, to go with this spindle, a water-cooled spindle. And there are a couple niceties to it over, I felt, over a router. Um, and really none of it was functionality. A router will do what the water-cooled spindle will do. But it had one, number one, absolutely the reason why I was going to spend the extra money to do it reason, and that is it's quiet. Um, I didn't, this is, you know, it's in the middle of my shop. You can see it's, you know, in amongst everything. And run times on some of the programs I figured I would wind up writing was going to be, you know, not a minute. <laughs> and so I decided, you know what, for the extra money, I want to uh, have something that's quiet, something that isn't driving me out of the shop. Because when I run a router, either this one or the one in the table, or even my little trim laminate trimmer, uh, I'll, I'll use hearing protection. And I didn't want to have to be walking around with hearing protection on and not be able to talk. So that was the absolute number one reason why. Now, it had some challenges with it. Um, I have it being controlled through Mach 3, and that's all working now, but that's really where the challenges were for me. Um, the instructions that came with the spindle and the spindle controller uh, were less than optimal. Um, it took a while for myself and someone a little smarter than me, shout out to Jeff, uh, to figure out what it was actually doing and then we wound up building a, a little circuit that takes uh, the pulse width modulation that Mach 3 is putting out and uh, turned it into an amperage control that the controller wanted. That seemed to be the best way for us to do it. So I've got it tuned now to where it's pretty close RPM wise. Um, is it 100%? No, but I can tweak the numbers in Mach 3 and get it to run. So in the control box there are uh, a couple of relays, um, a pair of them that kick on the coolant pump. And the reason it's a pair is because this whole setup is 220. <laughs> Story behind that. Um, and then there's uh, another relay. Why do I have the other relay there? I am doing these videos with my tablet and my cell phone, and so I don't have real complicated audio setups here or anything real special. 
but you will definitely be able to derive a difference. And if you've run a router, you know how loud they are. And so we're going to run this one. This, uh, this is a Porter cable, as I mentioned earlier, and it uh, runs at 23,000 RPM is what it says on the label. So we're going to run it at 23,000 RPM. We'll run the spindle at 23,000 RPM. And then you'll be able to hear the difference. For those of you who like empirical data, I've got a little sound meter and we'll run it as well just to give a number to those who like numbers. So anyways, let's start with uh, the spindle and I'll run it at 23,000 RPM and then I'll put a cut in the video and we'll switch right to the, uh, the router running the same exact way. So for these examples, I'm going to take the audio from the cell phone, which is sitting closest to the spindle right now. And I'm, not, I'm standing behind my cell phone. Uh, you can very easily talk over this. I'm quite sure the audio, you'll be able, you can hear my voice, and I'm not speaking loudly. For grins, let's turn on the sound level meter. And let's see if I can get in a spot where you can hear it. Yep. If I shut my yap, okay. I'm going to step back here so we're just off of it a little bit, the edge of the table. When I shut up, it's about 69 decibels. So we'll do the same thing with the router. I'm going to have the router standing up up here, which is in pretty much the same orientation as the way it would be if it were mounted as my spindle. And I will hold the sound device down here so you, those who like empirical, again, get those numbers. Otherwise, I'll try and talk to you. It'll be very difficult to do. Okay, at least the route is running. I'm at the same distance now as I was right at the edge of the table. We'll turn on the decibel meter here. We're at 95 and a half at this distance. And I'm sure it's hard for you to hear me. It's hard for me to hear myself. I've moved back across the shop, and admittedly this now is audio off my tablet. And you can see, well, there's the spindle on the CNC, so the, the router's sitting right there. Uh, we could talk at this stage of the game, but my voice is elevated. Man, I like it a lot more with a water to spindle. Let's give it a try. I'll, uh, I'll fire the spindle back up real quick and uh, you can hear the difference as it is across the shop. I'm about 20 feet away at this stage. Okay, she's running again at 23,000 RPM. I don't uh, feel the need to be talking loud to you now, so this is just my regular voice. And we could very easily carry on a conversation with that running. The reality is you're going to have a cutter going through material. So you're going to have some of that noise. That's not what I was trying to demonstrate here. I'm just trying to draw the distinction between the amount of noise you're going to get out of a router and the amount of noise you get out of one of these three-phase water-cooled spindles. It is strange, having only run a regular router my entire life, how quiet the cutter actually is. Uh, if I'm cutting plastic, even wood, i got to do something strange to get it to be loud. Uh, so anyways, that was the reason why I chose the water-cooled spindle. 
I'll uh, I'll put a link in the in the uh, description below uh, for one similar to this. Hope the video was helpful. I'm gonna go shut this thing down and uh, go back to cleaning up this mess I got in my shop. Hope to see you again next time. Later.